Hello! It's time for another update. It's been quite a while, so I apologize for that, although I don't think a whole lot of people really watch this uh, this channel with great anticipation, so I probably don't need to apologize for that, but nevertheless, I apologize. So, my Japanese progress. I've talked about this before in previous videos, but I don't think that talking in terms of percentages is really that useful. So I want to talk more in terms of my subjective experience of my Japanese progress. But I, I first want to say a little bit more detail about why I think percentages aren't really a reasonable way to talk about things. So basically, talking in terms of percentage treats language like this linear path where you like learn it and, and that that feels kind of like leveling up in an RPG or something right or talking in terms of like N5, N4, N3 JLPT scores or things like that it treats this language learning as this very linear process which in my experience so far it is absolutely not I think language is much more like a territory like a map and you have your insertion points when you first start learning, and you can add more insertion points as you keep going, but you're sort of exploring this territory, right? And from those insertion points, you sort of like start exploring paths around or kind of growing out from them. And because of that, you uh, very easily, I think inevitably end up in these situations where, uh, for example, I can have great conversations with people now uh, in very, specific kind of areas uh, or with very specific subjects um, without really too much difficulty but then there's other areas which really aren't any more intrinsically difficult but I just can't communicate about at all at this point I can't understand what they're saying and I can't really uh, express what I want to express uh, but they're not like intrinsically different difficulties, it's just I haven't learned this other area yet, right? And because of that kind of nature of learning languages, talking in terms of percentages is, if not useless, very difficult at least. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try, because <laughs> I, I don't even know how I would come up with a number at this point. Okay, so that out of the way, my subjective experience of my current Japanese level and also my Japanese progress is basically that I suck, right? My subjective experience of my current Japanese ability is that I suck, that I can't understand so much stuff, uh, and also my subjective experience of my progress in Japanese is that I'm not getting better. Uh, it just it feels like I'm not making progress, it feels like I'm stuck in this rut. Uh, and both of those things are really frustrating. But they aren't accurate. Or ra rather, uh, I mean, I, my Japanese does still suck, but uh, the, the feeling that I'm not making prog progress is very inaccurate, even though it feels like that a lot of the time. And I have uh, one story I want to share, one story about that that I think is illustrative. So my parents came to visit from America and I talked to one of the schools that I teach at and they were very excited to have my parents come and visit and join me in class to have kind of a special class talking about like their impressions of Japan and uh, what life is like for them back in the US and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was super fun. My students really enjoyed it. My parents really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Uh, everyone seemed to really enjoy it. Everyone had a great time. Uh, but anyway, so my, my parents are at the school with me, and just over and over again, I kept on just assuming that they knew what was going on, right? Like a, a teacher or staff member would come over and talk to me to explain what was going to be happen happening next, and I just assumed that my parents knew what was going on, which is super stupid, right? Because of course they don't know any Japanese, why would they understand what was going on? But 
I just assumed that they, they knew what was going on, and then they would just look at me really blank-faced, and I'd be like, oh, right, you don't understand. Okay, let me explain. And the reason that this is uh, important, or was kind of a revelation for me, is because it made me realize that I don't notice the Japanese that I do understand, if that makes sense. I mean, I understand it, right, and I utilize that understanding, but I'm, it's not like at the forefront of my consciousness of like, oh, wow, I'm understanding Japanese. It just feels really mundane. It just feels really boring that like, oh, yeah, we're, I'm just, this person is telling me stuff and it, it doesn't feel special in any way. But the stuff that I do notice is the stuff that I don't understand because that's really frustrating <laughs> that I can't. I mean, it's not always like super frustrating, but but it's like it's like, oh, yeah, my Japanese sucks. I can't understand that. Um, so there's this weird sort of like schizophrenia, I guess, to, to my feelings about my Japanese, because most of the time I feel like I suck, like I'm not making progress. But every once in a while I have these experiences, like when, when my parents came to visit, that make me realize in kind of this this flash that like oh wait no my japanese actually is getting better it's way better than when i first came here when i first arrived in japan like about a little less than a year ago uh, but my day-to-day -day experience because i'm not really noticing what i am understanding and i'm mainly noticing what i'm not understanding uh, and there's still so much that I don't understand. It just feels like I'm not making progress. It feels like I suck all the time. So that's really, that's really interesting. Um, I think like there's a, a big psychological components to learning languages in terms of like staying motivated. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Okay. So kind of my current status, uh, I'll, I'm going to explain it in terms of two, uh, Actually, no, three. I'm going to talk about three different uh, shows that I've been watching. Uh, so one of them is uh, Doraemon, which is a really uh, popular uh, kids animation series in Japan. Also manga, but I'm watching the, the anime, not reading the manga. Um, and that show, I can generally understand most of it. Uh, like, watching it doesn't feel difficult to me. Uh and I mainly just sit down and enjoy it. There's definitely words that come up that I don't know, right? Or grammar points or whatever, uh, structures, whatever you want to call them, that come up that I don't know. But I'm generally able to sit down and understand pretty much everything that goes on, maybe with looking a few things up. There's occasionally episodes that are just way out of my wheelhouse, I guess, uh, and that I'll have to look up a lot more stuff to understand. Um, but I... In general, I can sit down and watch an episode without having to look things up and understand uh, certainly the, the overall story and usually most of the details of what, what go on as well. So another show that I like to watch is uh, Shirokuma Cafe, which is a super fun show. I honestly don't know what age range it's aimed at. Um, it seems very adult in certain ways, um, not, in not in terms of like adult content, but just in terms of the style of humor, I guess. Um, but uh, it's a really fun show. I super enjoy it. Uh, and it mostly has pretty simple Japanese in it uh, compared to uh, a lot of other things that I watch. And But it's not as simple as Doraemon. So uh, I... With that one, I'd say... I mean, I can definitely sit down and watch an episode and enjoy it and understand at least, I think, half of what is said. Um, but it really depends on the episode. There's some episodes where I struggle to understand most, <laughs> most of what's going on. Um, and then other times where I just sit down like, wow, I'm really great at Japanese. I understood, like, almost everything. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it really depends. That one definitely, to me, Shirokuma Cafe feels like kind of a step up from Doraemon. Um, but, uh, okay, and then the, the last show I'm going to talk about is uh, uh, One Piece, which I've started watching relatively recently within the last couple of months. And it's a fun show, it's not my favorite, but uh, the reason that I want to talk about it is because it is also a show that's aimed at kids. Um, 
but it's a show that I actually have difficulty understanding a lot of what is going on. Uh, like, I can infer a lot just from watching the show, because, you know, visual storytelling and all that, but, uh, but in terms of understanding the language and some of the details of what's going on, uh, that one is actually pretty hard for me. Uh, and I think that's interesting, right? Because you have, like, Doraemon, which is... Which I rarely have difficulty with. Uh, definitely still stuff I don't understand in it, but in terms of just sitting down and enjoying it and understanding the language, I don't have too much difficulty with it. Uh, and then... But then One Piece, which is also very much aimed at kids, uh, and I have all this... A lot of difficulty uh, with it. And to me, that kind of highlights that, like, territory uh, language idea, I guess. Um, anyway, yeah, so that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, watching, like, dramas, uh, I can definitely enjoy them, and generally I'm able to follow the story. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's a good, good way to put it. Um, I don't really know where to put kind of my... Again, percentages are such a, a weak way of, of talking about language understanding. Um, there, yeah, I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm gonna <laughs> leave that, that aside. But I can sit down and I can enjoy them, right? For for the most part, depending on the drama. Um, uh, and let's see. Yeah, I think that's that's a pretty good summary of kind of where my Japanese is at. Um, I guess from a, a speaking standpoint, my Japanese is super broken but reasonably effective, I guess, at communicating. Like, I don't have a lot of difficulties communicating with people. Like, if I go to a bar or something and I sit down, uh, I can generally enjoy a conversation with someone, uh, depending on the topic. I mean, some topics I'll have <laughs> enormous amounts of difficulty with. Uh, and, you know, the nature of the conversations are always relatively simple, but uh, but I can sit down and have, have a good time and enjoy myself. Uh, and I think that's a really cool place to have gotten to. It's very satisfying to be able to do that. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's a pretty good summary of my Japanese at this point. So the approach that I, I'm taking in continuing to learn Japanese has shifted a little bit from what I was doing before. So my approach before was much more Anki heavy, and my approach now is much more Anki weak. Uh, so I'm trying to think of the best way to explain what I actually mean by that. So before I was relying a lot on Anki for learning new language, uh, for learning new words, and I don't really use it that way anymore. Um, so the way that I use Anki now is much more for as like a supplement, I guess, to trying to help things stick a little better. Uh, so, and I guess that, that's kind of like the intent behind the, the MIA approach, right? Like is you get to a point where you're doing sentence mining and Anki is just kind of a supplement uh, to your immersion. And so that's, that's pretty much where I'm at at this point. I don't really even add that many cards anymore. Um, maybe like a couple a day. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just, Anki seems not that important to me anymore in terms of my, my Japanese progress. I still use it and I still think it's useful, but it's very much a secondary thing. Um, as opposed to before where it felt much more like, uh, maybe not primary, but definitely one of like the, the pillars of my learning. And now it feels like I could probably even just drop it entirely. And I, I would lose a little something, but I wouldn't be too bothered. Um, so what I do for most of my studying now is, uh, just, yeah, just immersion, um, uh, with basically two, I guess, technically three kind of approaches. So, uh, one of them is a video player that I've talked about before called Voracious. Um, at this point, I've heavily modified it. I have my own custom version that I use uh, that has features that the the uh, one you can download doesn't have. For example, you can in my custom version, you can uh, color words, uh, which I find really useful to kind of keep track of which words I'm trying to learn right now, uh, which words I you know supposedly already know really well. Um, and yeah, so it's like color a word, and every time that 
word shows up in a subtitle, it'll be that color. I find that really useful and is kind of like a, it's like a halfway uh, approach between Anki and just just straight up immersion because there's some amount of tracking words and what you're trying to learn, but it's not like in your face and not like have to review every day. Um, but yeah, so I, I just have a variety of features that I've added uh, to that. So I use that pretty heavily. Uh, that's probably one of my main sources actually for my immersion, for my active immersion. Um, although actually, now that I think about it, like going to bars and things, I mean, that's definitely active immersion <laughs> as well. But in terms of my, my non uh, interacting with real human beings immersion, I guess. Um, so uh, the other thing, there's an add-on for Chrome, the Chrome web browser called uh, Language Learning with Netflix, I think. Uh, I don't, can't believe it, I don't actually remember the name, but I just use it. I don't, I'm not like looking at the name of the add-on all the time. Um, but yeah, Language Learning with Netflix, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, so I use that and I, you know, am paying the subscription to get like all the features. That also has like a vocabulary uh, or a word coloring feature. Uh, and so I use that as well. There's things about the language learning with Netflix, though, that I don't like, and one of them is that there's not an easy way to uh, hide the subtitles. Um, so one of the things I love about the voracious media player is that you can just, with a hotkey, like, toggle on and off the subtitles, which is really nice, and most of the time I have them off, and I just kind of toggle them on when I'm, like, checking understanding or, like, here's something and I want to learn it. Um, or, I mean, I also will watch shows entirely with subtitles uh, for some kind of, some amount of kind of I guess, reading practice uh, and to acquire some vocabulary. But um, yeah, language learning with Netflix basically doesn't have any convenient way to disable the sub the Japanese subtitles, which is really, really frustrating. I wish they would add that feature. Maybe I should file an issue. Um, and it's not open source, so I can't add the feature myself. Uh, I, I really like open source software, not because it's free, like I'm happy to pay for things. I just, it's nice to be able to go in and change things <laughs> because I want to. Um, anyway, so yeah, so those are kind of the two main ways that I'm, I guess, studying, right, where I'm not just immersing, but also like studying with subtitles. Uh, but then of course, just for immersion, I will use both Voracious and Netflix to immerse just without any subtitles at all as well. And so I do that as well. So that's, that's kind of my main approach, right? Like uh, with Voracious, I do both subtitle-based studying and just immersion-based uh, listening practice, I guess. Um, and yeah, that's... And then with the Netflix add-on, I do some subtitle stuff. And yeah, it's... I guess, like, as I'm talking about, it's actually pretty boring, right? Like, it's there's not much to it, and I guess that's kind of the thing, right? Like, this is not hard to do, it's it's not, there's not, like, some, like, super systematic way that you need to go about it, it's more like, the approach that I'm taking is, at this point, is basically just to consistently be engaging with the language, right? Just make sure that I am, like, trying to understand it, trying to engage with it, uh, immersing in it, and I feel like as long as I keep doing that uh, regularly uh, for a good amount of time every day, I mean, progress is inevitable. Like, I can't help but get better at Japanese. And I that has very much been my experience, you know, despite my subjective experience of feeling like I'm not pr making progress, uh, actually looking at where I am compared to, like, a year ago, I'm way better at Japanese at both understanding and speaking than I was before. So, Yeah. So if I'm going to sum it all up, which I am going to right now, uh, I think it's really easy to feel like you're not making progress, especially as you get into kind of uh, upper beginner levels of Japanese. It really starts to feel like you're not making progress anymore. Um, but you are. You actually still are. And trying to convince yourself of that is really important. Uh, just trusting that you actually are still making progress because, in fact, you are, even when it doesn't feel like it, uh, is really important. And as long as you are continuing to engage with the language uh, on a regular basis for a good amount of time each day, 
like you will just keep on getting better and better and better and you'll eventually get to where you want to be I, I think it's really as simple as that I don't think there's I don't think there's any special secret sauce other than that and that's really cool I think yeah anyway so I don't know when honestly I don't know when my next update will be because it's because it's hard to gauge my progress uh, I feel like I'll just kind of make updates as I feel like I have progress like obvious progress to report but that I I think there's kind of long chunks of time uh, between when that happens so yeah so honestly I don't know when my up next update will be maybe I'll make some videos about uh, some of the software that I'm, that I'm using because I do I do think it's useful um, but yeah other than that I don't know, maybe this channel is going to start just kind of not having so many videos, but uh, I am definitely still uh, still every day at it uh, with my immersion, and uh, and I do keep on getting better, and it's really cool. So, yeah. Bye.